So the Yoruba Pantheon has entered Smite, and Ooh. it's only got one kind of god in it right now. But I thought today we could dive a little bit deeper into into the Yoruba Pantheon and see kind of the interesting deities from the Pantheon that could make its way into Smite in the future. Ooh. I thought that would be kind of, kind of cool. I have five different almost deity. I, I say almost deities, I'll, I'll, I'll explain. But yeah, they're interesting to <laughs> say the least. Um, I haven't necessarily gone with like the ones that are like big, like big characters in, mm. in Yoruba mythology. I've gone with the ones that sound cool and strange. Fair enough. They're the ones um, that I want to hear. So To explain what I mean by almost deities, um, so in Yoruba mythology there are things called Arishas. Which is basically what this list consists of. On the Smite Wiki, um, they've they've done like a good definition of of Arishas. An Arisha is an entity that possesses the capability of reflecting some of the manifestations of Olodomir, who is Oloran. Arishas are revered for having control over specific elements by nature, thus being better referred to as the divinities. So they're basically deities. It's just a convoluted way of saying deities, I think. So that's the definition of an Arisha. Now that that's out of the way, uh, we could dive into the five interesting deities. Um, or so Arishas. The, yeah, so the first... Sorry, Arishas. Apologies. Um, starting out with n not necessarily an Arisha, but more of an Arisha metaphysical concept. Bear with me, please. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> They're also believed that they should be worshipped like an Arisha. So it kind of... Kind of it's the same. But this concept is called Ori, um, which Ori. I personally think is like the um, inspiration behind Ori in the Blind Forest. Um, I but... don't know what that is, but sure. <clears throat> okay, it's a game. It basically is the reflective spark of human consciousness embedded into the human essence. Right? Why, Wh so this... why can none of these just be like God of the Sun? <laughs> It's been five minutes, and I've just been sitting here confused the whole time as you explain about <laughs> reflections of divine nature and... Stay on track. Um, <laughs> um, so, how I thought this kind of thing could work. In Here is the Storm, there's a character called Abatha, who basically attaches, like, a symbiote to, like, a character or a tower, and then can, like, m use abilities around that ally and stuff right and like he so like support the ally have different abilities but like you're being moved around by this ally right i thought considering that it's kind of a human essence like this wispy kind of character that kind of enters your uh body <laughs> um <laughs> yeah i think that could kind of work really well like a very different kind of character that we've ever seen in smite mm. i like the idea of it being able to go into enemies and allies as well and ah so yeah uh oh, if you oh, if you like the idea of going into enemies stick around we got I another i can't go anywhere <laughs> <laughs> this was my plan. You are legally obliged to stay here, yeah. <laughs> also, um, Ori and the Blind Forest is quite a big game. Um, so it kind you're of... You're a big gay. <laughs> wow. You know, Smite's been known in the past to like include characters, you know, from like different sort of medias, right? Mm. Um, and I thought Ori could be a cool one. So there you go. The next four are actual Arishas. So no metaphysical reflection, bollocks, right? They're just deities. They're gods. But we can't say gods because they're Arishas. But they're gods. So this next one is called Babalu Ai. Or in Yoruba is often called Shapona, right? Uh, Shapona is an Arisha strongly associated with infectious disease and healing. Um, Ooh. They're kind of depicted as the kind of... Um, <laughs> god of like smallpox <laughs> sort of <laughs> behold the god of smallpox <laughs> um, they're kind of the maker of the infectious diseases but also the um healer of infectious diseases as well they're they're very much a doctor um maybe some sort of guardian character or this maybe... sounds like a trick yes 
Some guy is creating diseases and then selling the cure for them. It sounds a lot like how Apple run their company. They you know, they get rid of the you know they get rid of the headphone jack, but then make you pay yeah. for the headphone jack. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think it's kind of cool. Like I don't know something like an alt that heals allies and tick damages enemies. That yeah. kind of thing, like a very um, almost like a. I could see that as kind of like a guardian. I kind of prefer the um, the infection idea. Mm. Like the, I don't know. There isn't a lot in Smite. I guess Circuit that actually has kind of infection. Like the idea of spreading damage between the enemies. Yeah, and you're I kind right. Of li- I kind of cool. like the idea of him having to like spread illnesses to all the enemies. And then, you know, I don't know. Everyone who is affected by your illness takes damage over time or is slowed or whatever being some of his abilities That's so like your job is to keep all the enemies infected so you can control them that's awesome like what, what, what about like if like I don't know for every tick of damage on, on an enemy like around you is like kind of a heal for your allies so like every tick of damage Ooh. that's done and like the more people it's on the more the heal is kind of thing yeah with, with designers there's some cool stuff you can do yeah but yeah that is that is Babalu Ai or Chipona I mean easier to say Chipona but whatever um <laughs> ah I can't say I, you can't even say Chipona I can't say anything <laughs> I can't talk at all just move on please <laughs> oh Chipona is the easier one to say oh ship. <laughs> so the next one is called Eshu or Esu or something like that. It's basically just a trickster messenger god. Stop hiring the trickster god to be your messenger. <laughs> Get a different person to be your messenger. <laughs> Don't go with the one that keeps pulling pranks and giving people the wrong me- messages. <laughs> well, it's, it, that's interesting because um, Eshu isn't necessarily a messenger of the gods. He's kind of a messenger of everything, sort of. Like, decisions and stuff like that. Like, um... Eshu kind of directs traffic along the road of life from his abode at the crossroads of fortune, right? Yeah, he's a super speedy go-between. He can carry complaints to the gods, questions to the spirit world, and messages to any living thing. But he's also obviously a trickster god as well, So, um, and he has a sense of humour. Um, and will often throw a spanner in the works to keep life interesting. <laughs> which, which could explain why we don't always get what we want. <laughs> Which is actually a cool explanation for, like, why things don't go away, you know? Yeah. I don't I don't want to, like, I don't know, speak out of terms here, but there's always the thing of, like, if God's all good, why is there evil? Mm. Um, and that kind of answers that question. Yeah. You're uber good for doing that. Like, um, the person who made humans was drunk at the time, which is why we're not perfect. <laughs> That's genuinely something from your room mythology. We have a trickster god in Smite, and we have a messenger god in Smite. Trickster messenger, I can see his abilities being, like... And th- okay, this might be a bit too far, but like sending VGS to the other team oh. from the other team. <sighs> that's such a good idea. It's <laughs> a terrible idea, but no, it's a cool idea. No, that's such a good idea. <laughs> oh my god, that works perfectly. That it, literally it puts like, tricks from messengers together. But like the ability to like peer into their VGS messages and just like <gasps> send, I don't know, enemy missing right or like, yeah. I don't know, just start spamming you rock it, it wouldn't be used for good and it's probably not a good idea but i thought it would be cool <laughs> but yeah no i i that's an amazing idea holy crap um <laughs> why hire us hire us why are yeah. we game designers <laughs> yeah, I do. man this is so easy uh, <laughs> guy how, how can you spend like months on a character like it's just i know i just did it off the top of my it. head better than you can like just <laughs> get on my level <laughs> Esher would have to be an assassin Sure. Yeah, I, I, I could see more of him more as an assassin, yeah. Mm. Definitely. With those kind of traits, yeah. Considering that both Loki and Mercury are assassins, it kind of makes sense. Yeah, I don't know. Any kind of, like, sneakiness will just, I think, always lend itself to an assassin. <laughs> Pardon me. Um, <laughs> right, uh, moving on. It's fine. No one heard. No. Cuckoo. I think, although that sounds like a really <laughs> funny name for an Orisha. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Oh yes, I've I've heard of his famous clocks. <laughs> it's I mean, it's spelled K O K O U. 
cacao, 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 cacao. It must be cuckoo. <laughs> cuckoo, yeah. <laughs> the more I say cuckoo, the more I think it can't be cuckoo. <laughs> cuckoo is one of the most highly feared warrior undergods. Hunter. <laughs> um, they're linked with, and this is what I was saying earlier, they're linked with possession, like possessing spirits um, and like kind of trances. Which is okay. really cool as a character. I, I really like this yeah. idea. Um, we've not had a possession god before, I think. <laughs> when you start, I only just realised that you aren't talking about him taking your things, like taking your possessions. Oh my god. <laughs> That's what I thought of when you said possession. No, I mean like, posse- like being possessed. <laughs> like... <laughs> Entering spirits, yeah. He's, he's also a voodoo god as well. So like either voodoo or or yoruba for this. But like, yeah, like in, in the voodoo kind of rituals, sort of not yoruba necessarily. Um, it's like, um, followers fall into deep into a deep trance with rapidly beating drums. Ooh, imagine possessing and uh, like basically spy from TF2. Oh my god, that's amazing. I, I I was thinking of controlling an enemy, but that's a. I mean, all all that. Like I don't know you maybe you can select a enemy and then just control them from where they're standing or make yourself into the enemy and like be disguised as an enemy um i prefer, i think i prefer the first one like actually taking mm. the body because that's that is more possession yeah i don't know because like for possession to work it kind of feels like it should be a secret that's so impossible to balance i don't know yeah. what could be done with that well, unless it's not a secret and there's just kind of you can hit your enemies with your other with your character, right? Or or reposition them in a fight, right? Um, so if you see, I don't know, if if you see their support coming along or something, and you don't want the support in the fight, you could kind of possess them and lead them away from the fight so that your your allies can fight. Maybe. 44. So instead of just like taking control, which would be a bit op and annoying yes but you can like you can do little things like you can cancel their abilities you can cast random abilities you Mm. can nudge them so your w like i like the idea of so your wasd keys don't move them it just kind of shoves them in a direction that's a cool idea what so while they're walking in a straight line you can just shove them into that raw roll or something like that yeah and they actually look possessed like they're being shoved around yeah Ah, oh, and that they have like the eyes from like Incredibles too, yeah. <laughs> Wearing the goggles. Yeah. <laughs> they just place their goggles on. Yeah. Ah, oh, how Jing Chan work? Massive goggles around his chest, <laughs> like a giant flotation <laughs> ring. Just like. <laughs> <laughs> so that is Cuckoo. Um, also, a, a brief side note of Cuckoo. Cuckoo is actually a character in Marvel Comics huh. because um, kind of Yoruba and, and and this kind of pantheon is the pantheon of Wakanda. Could we get Vast then? It's also uh, Bast is also in it and uh, Thoth is also in it. That would be cool because they do like their um, pop culture tie-ins. Yeah. So if like Black Panther two like I don't know actually showed the Panther God Bast, maybe they could then they maybe that would then encourage them to add it into Smite, which would be interesting. The Panther got back. They've already got the Panther got best. In Smite. Bastet. Is that the same Bast? Yes. <laughs> Holy fuck. <sighs> I'm rethinking my entire life. Leave me. <laughs> That's cuckoo. Um, and for a final look into Yoruba mythology, I kind of threw in a little bit of a, maybe this wouldn't go into Smite. But it's very <laughs> fucking funny. This is Oko, or Oko. He is a strong hunter deity, as well as a fighter against sorcery. Also, he is depicted with a phallic staff. He wields a penis. He wields a penis. Okay. Um, with his representation <laughs> of his relationship with fertility. Also, bees are considered the messenger of Oko. Oh, yeah. Maybe some, like, taunts to a moosin cow or something. Yeah. But according to like according to one source, Oko kind of mysteriously vanished uh, from the earth, um, and left behind his staff, which people then started worshiping as like the the kind of symbol of fertility. Basically, <laughs> they, were, they literally were just like, oh, well, he, he must have left this for a reason. Um, no, I'm laughing because it's a fucking penis. 
Uh, people are worshipping his cock or staff. Sorry. Yeah, yeah. At the start of the rainy season, there is a festival devoted to Oko, in which men are allowed to get up close and fertile with any woman they choose. <laughs> oh, that should definitely be added to smite. That's going to be great. Yeah. That's, there's no issues. Oh. <laughs> Okay, but if this was going to go into smite, because it's what we have to talk about, <laughs> um, I would say probably get rid of the phallic symbols. Why and... did you pick the guy with the massive penis and the rape festival? Because <laughs> it's interesting. <laughs> You're forgetting he has bees as his messenger. <laughs> but, you know, hunter, um, fighter against sorcery. I like the fighter against sorcery thing. I don't know, I can say like his passive being kind of an Ancelia effect, so that yeah. every 25 basics, the next ability that hits you will silence enemies in a radius. Yeah, or like specifically magical or something. Yeah. So yeah, that that is, that's five um, <laughs> interesting deities oh, no, yeah. um, and Arishas from the Uber Pantheon. Yeah, if you have anything else you'd like us to talk about in this kind of format, then let us know. Penis star <laughs> with a rape festival. Okay, whilst Adam's uh, processing that, let us know whether you like our kind of renditions of these characters in Smite or if you have kind of your own ideas about if these characters went into the game. And also, as this is a new series idea format kind of thing, uh, let us know your feedback um, and if you'd like to see more of them. If you'd like to see a tale of Oleron featuring uh, the kind of the creation of the Earth, um, as well as a hen and a chameleon. Click the annotation on the left side of the screen. And if you'd like to learn more about this new format idea that we're doing with the channel, then click the annotation on the right where we break down basically our plans for the future of the channel. If you process that now, yeah? No. <laughs> Maybe you just need to rest now. Okay. Take care, everyone. Bye-bye.